Welcome to another weekend here on the platform. My name is Samu Mashe. My column will be read to you shortly. With a near frown above well-defined eyebrows beneath Around the benevolent shadow of his Niger Delta hat, Governor Udom Emmanuel was earnest about not saying the other guy's name. That belongs to gossip. It means to do so, and he means it. He challenges me to look through the files, scour his public utterances. He may fight, but he does not fight people. He dwells in the dungeons of policy and ideas. He does not even name the other party when the barn storms, no matter the storm. He cuts his own path. He plays his own chord. That's my upbringing insists the man who pilots the oil-rich Akwaibom state. The other guy is Godwill Akwabio, his predecessor, who once towered in a state he demarcated in flamboyant historical terms, just like before Christ and after Christ's B.C. and A.D. He says it is before Akwabio and after Akwabio. That will be B.A. and A.A. Sounds more like two familiar airlines from two powerful nations. After Akwabio, however, sours the palate for the now minister of Niger Delta. The after Akwabio story is unfolding in a less flattering narrative than Christ. After Akwabio is a story not of electoral triumph, but it shies away from a recontest, sparing a defeat in absentia, an evaporation of the spirit. As streams are, sang the Roman poet Virgil, power is... So, why would Governor Emmanuel not say his name? I ask if he is afraid. A little ruffled, he strikes back. He says his opponents once described him as a gate man, and a gate man can easily be sacked. But he's there. They are not. Results are the best revenge, he seemed to imply. Even when he throws another challenge, he would not say a name. He speaks of presiding over about 30% of the revenue that the state once commandeered, not to mention the steep rise in dollar value and inflationary pressures. Yet he mentions roads that he has undertaken at far lesser costs than he met them. Governor Emmanuel has challenged himself as well, and he is doing it in the form of what political economists call state capitalism. He wants Akwaibom State to become a state that makes profit, its version of generating internally generated revenue, away from the routine smugness of waiting for tax revenues from established private enterprises. One of his well-known forays is in the air, Ibom Air, with its aircraft that he boasts bests any of the ones flying around the continent. All over the state, Governor Emmanuel touts his completion agenda. He has challenged himself. To set up an infrastructure work is one thing. To turn them into fruits is another. Harvests, however, are of fruit already. If he will not say the other guy's name, he knows his name is on the line. Nigeria is the Philistine society. Our... Um, Money bags, our governments would rather spend money on maybe pop music, uh, spend money on on cheap entertainment, on on soccer uh, and stuff like that, rather than spend it on serious um, art production because they feel that well, that does very little to to enhance their individual interests. Uh. We are philistinic, yes. Especially our, our money elite, our political elite, they are philistine. Well, I'm going to say something that's going to offend a lot of people. Mm -hmm. We are illiterate. <laughs> we are people who don't read. Mm -hmm. We are people who don't uh, uh, seek mm -hmm. to develop our imagination. Mm -hmm. We have no imagination. We just look at what we see. Mm -hmm. We see, we feel. We and do get not excited. Finish. Now, that is so infantile. Mm. That is tragic. Mm. And if we go, go for all this cheap uh, uh, excitement all the time, mm. <laughs> we ain't going to go too far. 
because it's affecting our children, it's affecting our polity. Mm -hmm. Uh, people who don't read, they don't know their own history. In they fact, don't. history has been abolished in our... All the attempts to bring history back... It's, it's, it won't, fail. It, it won't, it won't it work. It has not worked. We don't feel anything. Mm. We don't see dirt. We don't have shame. Yes. There is no shame. There is nothing that embarrasses us. Mm. Because if, if we are embarrassed, we can, we can change our situation mm. like that. Amen. We're not embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is, that is damning us, is, uh, is this base, me, myself, and I. Mm. As long as I'm okay. Yes, everything is okay. Everything is okay. Now, who thinks that way but an idiot? Mm. Because if an, only an idiot doesn't know about the interconnectivity, of connectedness of, 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 of people, of life. Mm. So. That's why you're not, uh, and if you have people in the entertainment uh, industry are not generating texts about mm. our, doing narratives about our own condition, sensible. Profound. Profound uh, question. It takes about, time to, to come up with scripts like that. And it takes time for an actor to really do a work like that and make it really meaningful. Uh, and it's not like it's not. It doesn't happen by churning out um, a movie, a movie, a month. Uh, <laughs> and and uh, you know, I, I, I and I'm, I'm so sad when people say, "Well, we're the third largest something something," yeah. and the Europeans are giving us kudos for just being able to produce it's, thirty movies in thirty days, yeah. and they do not know that that's patronizing you mm. and they're insulting you because they can't produce. A meaningful movie. They, they do one. They do one. One a year. <laughs> Sometimes. Two years, three years of eight years. Or an actor does one movie one year, and then you don't see the actor again until two years. Yeah. And in between well, that, that they, actor they're working. is working. We don't have that here, but we think we're so we mm. it's it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Until we get to that stage, and our people say, "Yeah, you see how." Everybody respects us. They say that we, you know, we can produce things that Europeans can't do, we can mm. do mm. in this day and age. Mm. And they're, they're flattered. Mm. And I'm ashamed. I am embarrassed. Mm. For instance, we, 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 we missed uh, winning an Oscar. Yes. And, the, uh, and we were absolutely up in arms because they did not know that our entry mm. was that because our lingua franca is uh, English. English. <laughs> and nobody can see how wrong, wrong. how incongruous that was. <laughs> that was. Yes. That after 60 years of independence, yes. we cannot generate a firm in our narrative mm. and be mm. happy with the Bibio, with Igbo, with all our languages. Mm -hmm. which, and the, the world says, give us a give us story about yourself yes, in your own language. Yes. And you say, well, we, we speak English. Because they think they speak English like the Queen of England. England. <laughs> now, isn't, I find that embarrassing for, us, for entertainment. No, but we can domesticate our English, which we have done, which Shoenka does, Achebe does. Other people. Yeah, we have. But, mm -hmm. but, but, but you see, uh, can you not see the arrogance and the inferiority complex in that? That, that we have to justify that we are... We we're write English. We're, we're write English because our, mm. it's our lingua franca. We can speak English like the English, mm, yes. which, is, which we can't, for a start. We but, but we, we speak English, our own English. But we don't which is Which is also special. It's not Because the American speaks English own, like the American. And, they and the Australian you, like the Australian. But you're <laughs> fighting people because you say... You want well, to write the English like the English. No, you can't. <laughs> it is a slave mentality. You see, yes. when a slave gets freedom, some mm. people. Mm. Uh, you don't want to be associated with the, the others yes. who are still in slavery. You think yes. you are higher yes. and you, you know, you're, you're mm. better mm. than other people. Yes. And, and we're busy with this aggressive business of we're just, uh, uh, we're just as good as everything. Mm. We can speak English like anybody. Mm. I don't think that's something, uh, uh, mm. uh, any big crown that anybody can, can give do. you that you will think that that is flattering you okay. or respecting your culture. <laughs> now let me ask you a question about longevity. Even in, uh, you are closing in on 80. I am, yes. You are. 
people have all kinds of reasons, all kinds of um, explanations for longevity. What is your own? I breathe. <laughs> <laughs> That's my explanation. I just breathe. I love life. Yes. That's all. I live a day at a time. Hmm. I don't know about age. Yes. You know about this minute. That minute. That's, that's my explanation. I'm not, uh, I'm not... It's just like the line in the scripture that says, sufficient unto to, the day is yeah. the evil thereof. Yeah. Today's yeah. problem is for today, not for tomorrow. Yeah, that's what Jesus says to yes. me. Don't worry about don't tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. I don't. Mm. I live what these people uh, read and don't understand. Mm. I mm. live it. Mm. I don't worry about that. And I don't worry about aging. I'm not worried about not being 16 or well, 16. Yeah, you are, you are a cosmetologist too. Yeah, cosmetics. It's 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 uh, it's putting a face. Yeah, it's tidying up some things. Yeah, it's saying pictures. Mm. You know, makeup comes from Africa. Mm. We taught the world to do makeup. Yeah. You see how the world is uh, tattoos and everything. All of that came started here. Started here. Yes. So when somebody was interviewing me on uh, uh, Ipswich Radio yeah. and uh, said, oh, I've been here for a long time. What do I see? Uh, the, uh, how do I see? Uh, what, what have I noticed has changed in England? Yes. And I said, you know, when I was studying in England, you know, the sociologists were talking about how backward and primitive Africa was. Mm. Uh, so many years later, um, your children are walking around with loop earrings, piercing their skin, the things that you were doing <laughs> tutorials about condemning yeah. Africa for being backward and everything. Yeah. Tattoos all over the place. They didn't have an answer for that. I said, that's the change. Mm. All of this, came to, like cosmetology, like this makeup we do, mm. it's nothing to do with, mm. uh, 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 with Europeans. We taught Europe to start that's... cultivating themselves up. <laughs> Africa has always been the forefront of major issues like that yes. and they're not they're not small at all uh, uh, that you want uh, uh, you, you you want to do initiation ceremony you see how these young men mm. do themselves up and women in mm. fact men are more of the peacock than the, 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 than the, the ladies. ladies and and and, uh, and what they do with their ears what they do with their nose what they do the the, the chalks and the colors and everything mm. Europe was sitting around fuming mm. and envying us. As soon as they got independence, we, mm. no, 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 they got civilized is what I call it. <laughs> they started seeing that they could do something yeah. and they've commercialized everything mm. and sold it back to us. Yeah. That's, the, that's my beef that about is, my people. And then we accept it as authentic. Yeah, and think that they're giving it to us. Yeah. It's like, look at our hair. Mm. Look at our hair, yeah. and our entertainment could do something about it, mm. about putting our culture forward in the, in the world. Mm. What do you see all your women wearing? Somebody else's hair. <laughs> we are ashamed. Of and our I think, own hair. Yeah, mm. and I think that because the Europeans have told us we got nappy hair. Yes, head, and so we don't want to accept our own hair. We don't accept her. It doesn't matter how they change the narrative of our own beauty. Yeah. They tell us what is, what, 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 what is beautiful for us. Tell us who is a beautiful African. Yes. They tell us who is, a who is a great African writer. Tokenisms. They tell us who is Tokenisms a great African politician. Yeah. They tell Tokenism. us who is a great African footballer. Yeah. So we don't know who is great here unless they tell, they tell us. us. And our women, and I am particularly saddened about that because I think women have the power to change the world. Mm. We are raising the children. We born you guys, and we raise you guys. I know. And at, at, the, at the point of extremity, a man will cry for his mother. Mother. That's fantastic. It's, it's, uh, the soldiers, at, the, at, at their moment of death, they don't call for their father. No. They call their mother. Their mother. Mm -hmm. So I, I hold women like this, not on mm. a pedestal. Mm. Because that's the job they have been assigned to do. Mm, mm. And these are the women, when it, came to, when it comes now to their culture, mm. when it comes to the, uh, welcoming the renaissance of the black man, mm. 
these are women. Look at your television screens and look at your newspapers. They are the people wearing long hair like this. Yeah. <laughs> God made us like that. And we do not see how incongruous and how self-loathing that is. Because they do not feel that they are beautiful with their own hair. If somebody is well, told them that that's bad hair, mm. it's not, no, that's their excuse. It's mm. not modernity. If it's so modern, mm. why not think of what you can do with your own hair? Yeah. That's developing, that's progress. If your hair hurts you, why not think about things to make it more Optimal. comfortable to, to dress your hair? That's what cosmetology is all about, yes. to, to, make, to, to appear like that. Why not work on being authentic African? African. We don't do this because we think mm. it's not modern. <laughs> and we uh, have to look, <laughs> we have to put European head yeah. on our own hair mm. so that the world can accept us. Mm. And the bosses are this also, they will mm. not think that these people mm. are modern mm. and sophisticated. Mm. Uh, of course, we have not examined that word sophistry. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So Which means it's not real. It's <laughs> not real. So they think they're being sophisticated. <laughs> well, obviously they're being sophisticated because they're not real. real. <laughs> but that's not their job. Their job is not not to be real. Their job is to make us real mm. and authentic and in the modern world and to put our presence as God has made us mm. in the presence of the world just as we are and to be proud of that mm. and not be shouting this self-loathing and mm. hatred that we portray all the time in yeah. the name of modernity. modernity. Now, let's go to a topic that um, will interest uh, many readers. Um, uh, some people said you were brave to have come out about an assault that uh, you experienced when you were 65? 65, 60, 65. 65 by workers around you. Can you take us through it? Uh, is it brave? It is, it's incumbent on me. Mm -hmm. It is a responsibility to come out so that we don't cover uh, uh, the problems that we have in our society. You must mm. identify problems and mm. find solutions to, mm. that, to, to them. And there are many people who are suffering like that, mm. about self-worth, mm. about what they have done, about mm. guilt, mm. about if I said that, mm. would you value me less? Mm. Would you not respect me mm. because of that? Would you see me as soiled goods? Mm. Uh, and that sort of thing. Mm. Now, uh, that's more and more objectifying of somebody and mm. insulting mm. somebody. Mm. Instead of looking at the society mm. where you have that, mm. where men particularly feel that domination mm. of the female mm. gives them power. power. Whereas, Validation. Whereas what it shows is that... They're, they're insecure. Yeah. And when you have a collection of men that are so insecure mm. that they think uh, uh, mm. raping women, mm. and even when you're not raping them, you mm. feel so insecure that when you know, you're of a certain age mm. and you think a young girl on your arms mm. makes other people think that that mm. man can still get it up. Mm. Yes. When you need that, mm. something's wrong Some with you. Wrong, yes. you're, looking, you're, you're trying to be a man in the wrong sense. I want, I want people to start thinking about, about mm. that. Mm. And I'm not afraid to discuss any, any issues that we should mm. look at. That but you see, you, see you, you had these people who you trusted around you. Mm. And they took advantage of you because you're female and they are a And young, they didn't see a man, man around. They didn't see a man around. Mm. And so they took advantage of yeah. And they took advantage of you. They robbed you me blind. They, yes. yes, they did. And um, you... You didn't um, think of maybe putting them behind bars. My job is to report to the police. To the police, and the job of the police is to do their job. job. My job is not to hound anybody Nobody. around. Yeah, that's not my business. My business, my social responsibility yes. is to tell the law enforcement agencies this is that what this is what happened. Mm. They are to do their work. Why are you going to ask me to put them behind bars? I don't put people behind mm. by the law. But you waited such a long time to make it public. Yeah. Nobody asked me about it. Mm. When somebody asked me, I saw. Oh. But were you, were you not frustrated that the police did not 
really get these people. And that's and the nature of them. the beast. Mm -hmm. That's what will. Uh, mm -hmm. That's what. That's one of the reasons this is being discussed. Mm -hmm. That's one of the problems that we have mm -hmm. in our society. That something like that can happen, and nothing happens. In the newspapers today, a day hardly goes by without reports of rape. Yeah, what it's do you think they've so done? It's become so endemic in exactly. this society that even my newspaper, The Nation, had to make it the issue of 2019. That that was the most dominant, the most dominant factor in Nigerian experience. Because every day, if you open the paper today, you're going to see especially Somebody rape of, of youngsters, minors. Youngs are minors, and then you see rape of elderly people yeah. by young people yeah. who should be doing something meaningful with their life. Is it a reflection of how the society has now gone to the dogs? And it, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is rape of, of, of vulnerable people, but it's also a reflection of impunity all over Nigeria. I was society. going to say, well, <laughs> when, when you have a system where the people, the power that be can do whatever they like, mm -hmm. you're sending a signal to the rest of the society mm -hmm. that anything goes, mm -hmm. coupled with the fact that you do not have any apparatus mm -hmm. uh, on the ground mm -hmm. that, that controls law and order. Mm -hmm. As exactly. you read about these things, how many of the cases have been... Have been prosecuted. Exactly. Now, I think that's, that's the issue we should be discussing. Mm. How is it possible that people are being, uh, 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 being mauled mm. and being slaughtered, mm. being assaulted like this, and nothing is happening? Mm. What kind of a society is that? It means there is something wrong. Well, with our policy for a start, yes. with our governance for a start, and with patriarchy. Because mm. most of the people these things are reported to are men. Uh, They're the people who have the, uh, the, uh, the power to do, to something. do something. And they're not going to do anything because <laughs> somebody's, somebody rapes a woman. Uh, what's a woman to be for in the mm. first place? That's, the, the, that's the, the reason behind the Me Too movement that has now gone down uh, Harvey Weinstein. Yeah, and many it's ruined many people's uh, uh, lives. Yes. It's not just us; it's a it's a global, a problem. global problem. But some people are now saying that ah, if we're doing this, it doesn't speak well of us as a society. That's why you're having the Me Too over there. Mm -hmm. Something mm -hmm. being done Dumb, now yes. because there's an awakening of mm -hmm. people to say ah, they know they realize that. This rape and assault of people mm. is a question of political power yes. over, women. over women. It's a gender war. Mm. So what kind of patriarch, what kind of society had men who think that they can only affirm their power, confirm mm. their power mm. by, by domination and abusing women and children like that? That's what we want to be asking mm. ourselves. So when, when my case came about, you asked me why I did that. It's not about me. I know that sounds grand and everything. Mm. It's not meant to be grand and self efficient and self. Yeah. No, it's real. It's a political war that I've waged. Mm. I've put the gauntlet down. Mm. And I'm sure it's, it's the sensationalism of part mm. of it that people, a lot, mm. actually, that's not fair. Because the response we have got from this mm. has been very, it's been very, very encouraging. There's been support mm. and love coming mm. uh, uh, from everywhere, yeah. which means people know that this is not right. right. But do we have the uh, society that's going to correct this? Do we have the even the institution? We don't have the institution. Support. We don't have the systems. That's what we're finding out about our society. And you see how very gradually it's crumbling. Because a, 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 a society that, that doesn't have the system and structures mm. on the ground, the, the legal system, the judiciary, which mm. is one of the four pillars of democracy, mm. is nothing to write home about. Mm. The media, the fourth estate of the realm, mm -hmm. is beholding to mm. the executive mm. and power generally. And commerce. and commerce. Is it any wonder? Mm. The whole thing is crumbling down around our ears. Yeah. 
I hope that we wake up in time. Otherwise, this business of uh, uh, they want Biafra and they want to do dua, they won't even have the chance to have anything. There won't be anything to pick to from pick the from mess it. that we're yeah, going yeah, to yeah. generate. Yeah. All right. Um, we've had Taiwo Ajayi Lyset in a very thrilling experience of an interview. Thank you, sir. And thank you very much for being with me on this show. I'm grateful. It's a pleasure. Thank you. thank you. Just before the program ends, this is my poem in honor of Leah Sharibu. Before you left, you were a morning dew, not yet dew before they came. But now, a child and many bruises later, we refuse to accept that a rude thought, a rude touch, took away your dawn. But that is the Leah we know, and on whom we have built a monument in our hearts. Thank you for watching the program today. You can catch up with my published column on www dot samomashe.com also follow me on twitter my handle is at samomashe until next time be good